Hey guys, welcome back to a, another episode in my tips and strategies, and I'm actually going to be showing two games um, in this video, and that's because nothing really happens in the first half of either. In fact, the second video, it's not really till the end, but we'll get to that. But uh, in this game, uh, I actually really want to kind of focus on a, a, a couple mistakes that um, some people made. And again, guys, anytime I show somebody's mistakes, it's mistakes I've made in the past, and it's just me trying to get better at the game. Um, so I like to be able to kind of look to see uh, mistakes uh, so I know not to make them myself. So uh, anytime I call out somebody's mistakes, I just always worry that somebody out there is going to think like I'm dogging somebody. I ain't dogging anybody. It's it's mistakes I make. Okay, so let's kind of look to see where everything is at the moment. So uh, we're well into this game here. Now, the circle had been up in this area. I had actually jumped into Pozo, uh, worked my way into a couple buildings, didn't encounter anybody. Uh, I found a vehicle, went north, and the whole time I was up here, um, I had a three scope, so I wasn't really able to zoom in on anybody uh, in fact, I really only end up seeing like one person the entire time I'm even up here. And there were people around me, just no one was visible. So, excuse me, the plane goes over. Uh, so, I am currently up here. I'm working my way down. And we'll fast forward a little bit more. And so, I'm coming out of the water treatment plant, and I actually see this guy right here, E. Isaac. Now, he goes tearing up this hill, and he ends up stopping at the top. I think he takes a shot at somebody. I think he does. Yeah, he does. He gets down, Codger John. So what I immediately do is I get right behind this guy and I'm trying to trail him because he's going to basically be the closest person to me. Uh, I might be able to get him in the back. And at the same time, he's kind of in between me and the circle. So he's a priority that I need to get down. Now, when I'm moving up here, uh, Angry Claw down there ends up seeing me and he actually took some shots at me. Um, didn't hit me, didn't take any damage, but I, I take an energy drink. And I move over to see if I can't see this guy, take a shot. Uh, he jumps into a dune buggy, so I don't get to take a shot at him. So I go ahead and kind of move up, and I get into the circle. And we're going to look real quick at the mistake. So I'm going to slow it back down. Okay. Now... The guy that we're looking at is E. Isaac. He was the guy that we just saw a minute ago. So here's the mistake that he makes. He is coming into the circle from all the way back here. Now, he's not taking any damage yet. He sees this guy right in front of him. Now, he just got down and he just took a shot. The reason I say this is a mistake is because if you look at the terrain right in front of this guy, in front of Dirty... He is going to make the circle, but there's no real place for him to get down. Uh, it's not like he's taking damage from the circle. So the moment he gets to the safety uh, of the, the next circle, he's going to immediately lay down and heal up. So that's not going to happen. So probably what this guy was going to do after he just went to this crate would be to run down to here and either kind of keep running and get up over the hill or maybe even get into the shack. The reason I say this is a mistake is because this guy ends up taking a shot. Now, he doesn't get him down. When he doesn't get him down, guys, it's late in the game. He's going to start taking a buttload of damage from the blue zone. He gets hit by Dirty hits him, ends up hitting him again, and then he goes down to the blue zone because that's it. Look, you, you don't want to take shots at people when you're trying to get into the blue zone if you can't get that person down. If that person's right in front of you, then there's a good chance that they're not going to look right behind them. So that means you might have the ability to at least get up to the circle. This guy ended up going into this shack. This guy at least could have been able to get to the safety uh, right there, but, you know, he didn't. So, 
you got to be really selective when you're taking shots at someone when you're trying to get into the blue zone or the safety uh, zone at the end of a game uh, because the damage you're going to take is just too much. And I don't know if this guy could tell that he had gone to a crate or not. So even if he gets a headshot on him, he's probably not getting him down. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of fast forward here and... I start to move up. Now, I knew that there was somebody over in this area uh, because of the fight that just happened. Now Dirty is taking shots at somebody else, and so he's sort of giving away his position. So I start moving down, looking for this guy. Uh, I mean, I know he's super, super close. I know he's right near me. So what I'm trying to do is very cautiously and quietly work my way up. Now, there's not a lot of time left, but I know how close I am to the circle. So as long as I can get this guy down and I know how close he is, then I know I'm going to be able to get to the uh, next circle. <clears throat> so I look into those bushes here in a second, and that's when I see movement right there. Get the guy down, don't have any time to raid, and I just make a beeline. Get into the safety right here, and I make it. Now, there ends up being a guy right over here, this guy is Seeker. He's also made the uh, circle, so now we're kind of looking. And if you have ever watched any of my videos, you know I am not a big believer in getting into buildings, especially late in the game. But there are moments and times when it makes sense. Now, we are basically at uh, La Hacienda. Now, at La Hacienda del Patron, this building right here, typically people don't get into this part of the building what they like to do is get over into the second story they like to be basically over in these buildings now that's just been my experience it's not every game but i felt confident that if i could get over here i could get next to this building and i would either be able to hear somebody on the inside so i would know not to get into it or if i didn't hear anybody i would get in and at least have a little bit of cover now seeker had worked his way over and he had actually seen me, but he didn't know where I ended up. Now, I hear this guy coming. When I hear this guy coming, I'm waiting for him to rush in, but he didn't. So once he moves over here, I move. I'm looking for him. And I don't get the kill. Basically, I killed that guy. But the blue zone finished him off. So now I can hear all these gunfire uh, going on over there. Uh, I go ahead and kind of work my way over. And do, 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 do. All right, here's kind of a funny situation. Okay, here's what you don't want to do. This is the problem sort of being in buildings. Sometimes you can end up inadvertently running into a place you're not supposed to be. This guy just put himself into a small room with no exit except this doorway. What ends up happening is there's a guy on the outside who sees him. He starts taking shots. Mr. Nice Lags knows where this guy is, so now he's going to work his way over. So, so <laughs> Trad Boy Chad starts shooting this guy through the window. He's taking all kinds of damage. And that's the end of dot fix. So, guys, it's the danger when you're in a building. You can inadvertently kind of put yourself in the wrong spot. So, Angry Claws uh, is up here on the second floor. And this is where he's at. So, we're down to five people at this point. Now, this guy over here is sort of in the best position. Um He's down basically already in the circle. He's kind of moving his way around looking for people. Um, uh, Chad had worked his way over. Um, this guy's name is like Lolaqui or whatever. Uh, he ends up seeing him, but he doesn't uh, get any shots. So we're down to 15 seconds. The, the end of the game is uh, afoot. And so Angry just jumped out of the second floor there. He sees Mr. Nice Lags in here. 
And again, he kind of puts himself in a room with no escape. I I'm not sure what he was thinking there, but he did what he did. Okay, so here we're going to look at just basically one sort of final mistake at this point. Now, here's the thing, guys. When you get into a building, especially at the very, very end of the game, do not put yourself on the second floor. Do not get onto the second floor, especially in one of the long buildings like this. If you put yourself on the second floor, you've got this window to get out, and you've got this door to get out, and that's it. So what ends up happening is Angry ends up taking fire from Lull and he ends up running to get to cover to get into this building. When he gets into this building, this is when Chad makes the decision and he can hear this guy running up so he knows that he's basically running up to the building. Chad jumps out this window. Here's the problem. When you jump outside of a window the guy who you're basically trying to hunt down because he knows this guy's rushing into the building, he's going to hear everything you're doing. He knows exactly where you are. It's delayed reaction with uh, the glass, but... I, you know, Chad ends up jumping out the building, rushes in, runs through the door, and the whole time, Angry hears everything that's going on. He knows exactly where Chad is. He knows exactly what he's doing and he ends up paying the price. So we're now down to three people. We've got about 36 seconds left, and I know that there is somebody in this building. Now, what I was saying to myself at the time was, I'm in a ton of trouble. I'm in a ton of trouble. And the reason I'm in such a bad spot isn't because I can't make the circle, but it's because I don't know where the last guy is. So I know that there's someone in this building and my guess is they're probably going to come out one of these two doors they i'm hoping they go out the other doors because if they go out the other door then at least maybe the last two guys will see each other and that'll give me a little bit of an advantage but if this guy comes out this side and i can hear him at this point i i mean i i basically know this guy's over on this side of the building so i know he's coming out so we're down to 15 seconds. When you get about to uh, the 10 second mark, that's when I get up and I go ahead and I, I, I get into position uh, or maybe at the eight second mark. So my plan at the moment is to get up to here and position myself right here. If this guy opens up the door, I'm gonna be able to light him up. If this guy rushes out this top, I know that the only place that he's really going to jump is going to be right off that side of the balcony because it's the closest to the circle and where he's trying to go. So, lo and behold, that's exactly what happens. And the moment it happens, it's kind of like, crap, this last guy knows where I'm at. This guy jumps right there. get the guy down and I have no idea where this last guy is. All I know is he knows my position. Uh, Lol ends up chucking a grenade and then he works his way up to here and it's basically just the end of the game at this point. Um, I try to lay down just to see if uh, I might get some cover. Uh, Lol takes a little bit of damage right there, but I just have no cover. I don't even get a shot on him. Uh, I mean, I'm shooting at him, but I don't hit him. And so I'm just really in a bad situation. And guys, that's just the game sometimes. Sometimes the, all the advantage is for the other player, and that just means that you're not going to end up getting the chicken dinner, and it doesn't really matter what you do. Um, I had an opportunity there. I was getting shots off. Um, what I was actually doing was hitting this fence, which, you know, there's a bunch of holes there, developers. I think some of my bullets should have gone through. But uh, anyway, um, guy's just able to get me down. So I end up getting second place, which stinks, but I call myself the king of second place. So it sort of is what it is. So let's jump into the next game. Alrighty, guys, in this game... Um, we're getting basically right to the end in this game. Uh, there's 12 people left. Now, guys, this game is not a model game. This game, though, is a...
perfect example of how I approach the game. The only thing I care about getting is the chicken dinner, and I don't care how I get it. That's that's how I have fun. That is just how I approach the game. It's not to get a high kill count. It is just get the chicken dinner. So we're going to kind of look. We'll scroll in here so you can kind of see. So here's the situation as it is. So you can see where I'm at, how close I am to the next circle. Now, the whole reason I'm kind of saying this is how I approach the game is because... At this point of the game, I had worked my way all the way over from the west side of the map uh, to the east side. Uh, I had been in this church area right here, and I had worked my way down, and I kind of kept getting lucky with how close the circles were to me. Now, I only had a vector and uh, with like a compensator attachment, and that was it. Uh, and I had an M16 with a 3-scope. That was it. As far as the attachments go, I think I had an extended clip for, for, for that, but I had raided a bunch of places and I could not find anything uh, at the beginning of the game. It was pretty frustrating. So I'm in a position right now where I have completely inferior weapons to really everybody else at this point. Um, I had actually seen this guy. I had seen somebody else that was up here uh, who got taken out. Uh, and then this guy over here. Now, I kept looking up into the kill feed. And I kept seeing people get um, th their kills with the Car 98 uh, SKS. Um, and so you can kind of see where I'm at at this point. And it's like right there. I see this Aranar guy over there, but I do not take shots. The whole reason I'm not taking shots is because I know... I'm really not in a position to get that guy down. Um, I'm just not in a position to do that. I've got an M16. This guy over here, I knew he had an SKS because he was taking out people with it. So I'm in a position where I need to wait. I need to wait until the circle is small enough to take advantage of the weapons that I do have. So I am using the only advantage I've got at this point, and that is... No one knows where I'm at. Now, where I had uh, been and coming into the circle, I had kept looking at the people, uh, or looking at the building up here to see if I saw anybody. I never did. Uh, looking into here, see anybody coming down? Never did. I didn't see anybody coming from this direction, and I knew no one was right behind me. So the only advantage I've got is the fact that no one is near me, and no one knows where I'm at. So I am allowing these guys to take each other out just one by one, slowly um, throughout the game. Just so I can get into a position where I can take advantage of my M16 at a closer range with a 3-scope. Because I know these guys probably have 6-scopes, 8-scopes, you know, whatever. So we get down to 5 people. Uh, this guy, unfortunately, over here dodged this. He had been in a fight earlier with Cognowin. So close. <laughs> His body actually made it to the safe zone, but he didn't. So that guy goes out. So we're now down to four people. Uh, Cognowin just took out the Steve. Now, when he does this, um, we're down to three people. Now, it's kind of important to, to, to see where I'm at. I'm all the way over on the other side. Now, this is a pretty big circle. Um, there were five of us a second ago. This is a pretty big circle for five people. So, I'm all the way over on the other side. Now, what ends up happening is Aaron R. Uh, moves down, and he actually gets into a fight with Cognowin. And when I hear those gunshots, um, I am slowly working my way into I'm trying to go slow because... I know where one guy is, he's on the other side of the map, but I don't know where the third guy is. So I'm kind of just scanning just to see if I see anybody move uh, from the north. I don't see anybody. And Cognowin, unfortunately, I don't want to say he makes a mistake, but he, he did something that he, he probably needed to pay a little more attention to. He's over here, and he kept looking um, in the direction that you see him looking. And the reason he's doing this is because Dodge This, the guy that just went down to the play zone or the, the blue zone, um, he knew that he was over there because they had been in a fight. So he is spending so much time looking for this guy. And 
if he had kind of been paying attention to the to the kill feed, he I, he would have seen that someone just had died to the play zone. Now there's no way to be a hundred percent sure that that's the guy, but it kind of stands to reason that if you're looking at the kill feed and you see that the play zone had just killed somebody and you're looking in this direction and you don't see anybody, it stands to reason that that's the guy that died. So he ends up spending so much time that only at the last second does he hear the guy come up behind him and at that point it's just too late so he does take some damage Aaronar does but it's just not enough so guys we are now down to heads up now this is a pretty big circle for heads up but when I hear those gunshots buddy let me tell you I took off running I went as fast as I could go to get to the circle because I knew that this last guy was somewhere over on the other side of the map when I heard those shots. So I am just booking it to get over into position. And I wasn't a hundred percent sure, you know, where this guy was going to end up being. Um, so I kind of pause outside of the circle right here, trying to look just to see if I see anybody. Um, I don't, so when I don't see anybody immediately on me, I go ahead and move over to get into a better position. Once I get over into the better position, then, you know, I'm in the circle and, um, you know, there's now a minute and a half to go. So we're going to kind of look at something here real quick that I, I, at first when I was looking at this, I thought it was a mistake, but the more I kind of looked at it, I'm like, wow, this guy actually was really smart with what he was doing. So if you kind of look at this guy, he keeps looking over in this direction. Now, part of the reason he was looking in that direction is that is where Cogna Wind was looking. But the other really smart thing he's doing is he knows how close he is to the circle. Now, he knows that if I am over in this area, that I'm basically going to have to run to get into the circle, and he's going to be able to take shots at me, and he's not going to have to worry about taking damage from the blue zone. And so if I'm not over here and I'm on the other side, then he already knows that I'm going to get into the circle. And so um, it, 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 he's not really going to have to worry about it. He, he's, he's only really going to have to worry. Um, well, he's not really going to have to worry about anything. Um, so that's why he's looking in the direction that he's looking and positioned himself where he did, not just because of the tree, but because he knows if I am over there somewhere, I'm at a huge disadvantage. And if I'm already in the circle, then it's really not that big of an ordeal. So he does that really, really well, but then he ends up making, um, a little bit of a mistake here. We'll kind of look at it from his perspective. He's trying to scope in with the car 98. And he ends up taking a shot at me, except he's not taking a shot at me. He decides to shoot a bush when we eventually get there. Funny thing is, the bush is actually near me, but this guy has no way of knowing that. So he kind of looks over. Zooms in. Okay, so that's not me. So he's like, okay, crap. All right, then kind of a kind of a mistake because he just gave away his position so when he does that I kind of react and I'm like man does this guy see me does he know where I'm at and uh, the, the uh, circle is going to start coming in so now I'm in a really good spot I'm in an elevated position and I know that this guy is somewhere over here so all of a sudden this guy makes what I think is a mistake he goes to the crate now guys First of all, he should have positioned himself behind the crate. But then on top of that, um, just to kind of give himself more cover, because he's still convinced I'm somewhere over there. Um, it, I, I just, It's just my opinion. I think you have no business going to a crate when it's heads up. So I end up getting a shot on this guy. When I get a shot on this guy... I'm positive that he doesn't see me out of the corner because he's pulled up the tab and he's looking at all the different weapons. So right there, I get a really good shot on him. Um, I fired a couple rounds and he's trying to get, you know, the gun out of the crate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I know now where this guy is. Once I know where he is, like okay, I, I I'm in decent shape at this point because. 
Um, circles coming in. Um, this guy is sort of at a disadvantage. So I do what anybody would do in this spot. I chuck a grenade. Now, I get, I get really lucky uh, with the fact that the circle comes in and forces him to forces him to leave. So I threw that grenade. I don't do any damage, but he hasn't fully healed up yet. And you can see where I'm at. And guess what you see up here? That's grenade number two. Grenade number two is going to end up doing its job. So it's always nice to get a chicken dinner using a grenade. But this guy was in sort of a really bad, really bad position right there. There's just not much he could do at that point because even if the grenade doesn't get him, um, he never actually got his weapon loaded uh, that he had taken out of the crate and all I would have done was just move up at that point because I had switched back. I wasn't going to throw any more grenades and I was just going to use the vector and get this guy down. So, guys, this is not a model game, but here's what you have to say to yourself. Um, it just depends on how it is that you want to play. If I'm going for the chicken dinner you know, and there's 16 people left, I'm going to take advantage of the circles. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that no one knows where I'm at. I'm going to wait as long as I can to get into the circles that way, you know, until they're small. So I'm just not taking errant shots. I'm going to wait so I can kind of use my weapons to the best of their ability um, in close, closer quarters combat uh, rather than trying to take sniper shots with a three scope. Um, some people are amazing shots with the M16 and the 3-scope. I'm not. I know that. So I tried to take advantage the best I could. So, alrighty, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video, and we will catch you next time. See ya.